Hello mathematicians! You should have just finished your number talk and now we're going to start our mini lesson. I'm so excited to be meeting with you online for math workshop and we're going to do some learning and we're going to improve our division skills today. So yesterday we talked about how mathematicians really think about what the groups are in a problem and determine if they know how many groups there are. So when they're looking at a division problem, they first ask themselves, okay, what are the groups in this problem? Because they can change depending on the context of the problem. And then they ask themselves, do we know how many are inside those groups? So then we looked at this chart and we said that mathematicians think about these questions in order to determine if a problem is fair share or measurement. So the first question we asked ourselves is, what are the groups in the problem? Once we figured that out, we asked does asked ourselves, does the problem tell us how many groups there are? And if the answer was yes, then it was a fair share type of problem. And if the answer was no, it was a measurement type of problem. So we're going to practice that together again today. So we're going to be looking at two different problems together. And as we look at those problems, I want you to help me go through these questions and help me actually solve them today. So here's the first one says Grayson is selling his baseball cards in packs of four. If he has 1,782 baseball cards, how many packs is he able to make? So again, let's think about our first question. What are the groups in the problem? Enter that into play posit now. If you said the groups are the packs, you're absolutely right. He's going to, he has 1,782 baseball cards. He's gonna make packs of four. So the packs are the groups that we're making in the problem. Does he tell us how many groups there are? Enter your thinking into play posit. If you said no, you are correct, and here's why. It tells us that he's going to make packs with four in it, but he doesn't tell us how many packs he's going to be able to make. So the answer is no, which makes this a measurement type of problem. We know how much is in each pack or each group, but we don't know how many groups there are, how many packs there are. So that will take us to actually solving it. Again, we use that top row of our array to show the amount in each group. So this is where we put how much is in each group. This over on the side is where we put how much group, how many groups there are. Well, because this is measurement, we don't know how many groups there are. We do know how much is in each group though. So we're going to put a four up here at the top, and now we're going to take away groups of four until we get to this number, 1,782. So I'm gonna get us started, and I'm going to make 200 packs. And I know if I make 200 packs of four, 200 times four is 800. So I'm going to continue until I get to 1,782, because that's how many cards he has. So I've gotten you started. I want you to continue. You can choose to start with 200, or you can choose a different number, whatever works best for you, because our arrays can look different, um, but we should still get the same answer. So get pencil and paper and try, or braining camp, or tools, whatever you have, and try to solve for how many packs we will be able to make of four. Once you've got that, enter it in a play posit, and then we'll check together. All right, you should have entered your answer now, so let's check to see if your answer is correct. So I have 800 here, and I know that's 800. So I need to get to 1,782, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do 200 more, and that'll be 800. And that changes how much I have in my array to 1,600. And then if I continue on, I'm going to try 25. And I know 25 times 4 is 100 cards. And that takes me to 1,700. I need 82 more. So I'm going to add 20 packs. 
And I know 20 packs times four cards is 80. And now I have 1,780. Oops. 1,780. So I have two extra cards that I'm not going to be able to make a pack out of. So those two will just be kept, but we weren't able to make a pack of four out of them, so they'll just be set up off to the side. But the amount of full packs I'm going to make is right over here. This is the answer. So I'm going to add these together. 200 plus 200 is 400, plus 25 plus 20 is 445. So he can make 445 packs of cards. And that is the answer. If you got that correct, congratulations. If not, go back and think about what might have gone wrong and try to fix it. We're going to try one more together today for mini lesson. The next one we have says, Zoe has been saving up money to take her family to Jamaica. If, her, if the trip costs $4,860 for all of her family to go, how much does it cost for one of them to go if there are six people going? So the first question we need to ask ourselves are, is what is the groups in the problem or what are the groups in the problem? Go ahead and enter into play posit what you think the groups are. All right, if you said people, you are correct. Awesome job, I'm proud of you. If not, it is people because we know that we have the cost and there's people going and we wanna know how much it costs for one person to go. So we're going to take those six people and um, divide the money evenly among them. Do we know, does the problem tell us how many groups there are? What do you think? Enter that into play posit. If you said yes, you're correct because it tells us exactly how many people. There are six people. Because we said yes, this is a fair share problem. So let's go ahead and start solving it. Remember, we need to get 4,862 inside of our array. And this time, we know the amount of groups. There's six people, but we don't know the amount in each group. So our answer is going to be here, and we're going to put our people here. So I've got my six people and I'm going to erase this here so that we've got some room to work. All right, so there's my six people and I'm going to start by putting $500 in each group. So if I do that, I'm going to have $500 dollars for the first person that's the cost oops so each person right now is paying five hundred dollars for the trip if i add all those five hundreds together i have five hundred then a thousand one thousand five hundred two thousand two thousand five hundred three thousand so right now i have three thousand in my array i want you to continue you can start where i have started and use 500 or you can choose another way to start and continue try to solve and figure out how much one person is going to pay it would cost for them to go on this trip go ahead and continue that using a tool using braiding camp using anything that you have available to you and enter your answer into play posit and then we'll check together once you've done that all right you should have entered something into play posit now and we're going to continue on so you can check your thinking. So I know that's 3,000. I'm going to put 300 more dollars into each group. And if I do that, oops, 300. Putting that into each of my groups. And when I do that, I'm going to have 1,800 more in my array. So 3,000 plus 1,800 takes me to 4,800. Now I need 62 more in my array. So I'm going to add $10 to each. So 
So now I'm putting ten dollars. And now I have four thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. Now I could break these two dollars into cents and put those in, but I'm gonna stop here for now and just show the whole dollars. And in one row, one person will pay 500 plus 300 plus 10 dollars. So it is about 810 dollars per person. So each person it would cost 810 dollars. So if you got that answer, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And if you didn't, I'm still proud of you because you as a mathematician are going to make mistakes. And the best part of making mistakes is going back and finding what happened. So I hope that you go back and look if you made a mistake and see where you could improve so that the next time you have this um, problem, you can do even better. Now that you've finished mini lesson, you are going to be going into rotations. Today, you will have unit of study rotation, dream box, and small group. Click next to see what unit of study is for today. And then after unit of study, you'll go to Dreambox and then finally small group. At the very end of rotations, you will have reflection time where we will come together and do some thinking about our math workshop today. I'm so proud of the amazing work that you do in class and I can't wait to see the amazing work that you do online today. Keep working hard and we're excited to see all the math that you do.